Mr. Schock. <clears throat> Thank you, Madam Chairwoman. And again, I appreciate the testimony. And uh, so many good questions have already been asked, so I won't, um, I won't be repetitive. Um, first, uh, to my witness, Ms. Martin, um, you talked about um, some of the uh, creative uh, creativity you've had to enlist. Um, uh, Havana has had uh, very high unemployment, uh, the, um, uh, your county especially in my congressional district has one of the highest unemployment rates or actually has the highest unemployment rate of the 20 counties that I uh, represent. Um, maybe you could talk a little bit about how the above average uh, unemployment rate in that area has affected your company um, and specifically the, the customers, obviously, who, who ultimately uh, buy your uh, publications. Um, you mentioned you do sheet-fed sheet fed printing. Um, maybe you can talk a little bit about how that benefits your customers and how you've had to uh, become stronger or more creative uh, given the tough economic times we're all facing, but especially in your part of the world. Thank you. Uh, well, you've asked a couple of different questions. Um, one of them was about, um, you know, our low unemployment and how that's affected us. And um, High unemployment. I'm sorry, the high unemployment, <laughs> yes. Um, you know, I mentioned about newspaper circulation, taking a nosedive. And, you know, we've tried to hold our own, but what happens is, uh, as far as our, our circulation is concerned, is people find ways to uh, cut costs and share newspapers. So that cuts into our circulation. But, you know, we understand that that's what people have to do until they can get back to work again. And, of course, Havana has worked on s the different organizations that I've been involved in. We've, we've worked on lots of different programs trying to shore up businesses so that there can be continued employment. You know, we, um, there was a, a federal grant that helped us go to Fairfield, Iowa, to see what they're doing with small business incubators, you know, because you've got to get, I mean, I believe the gentleman over here had said 80% of the, uh, as many as 80% of the jobs are created by small businesses. So we've done a lot to try and, and work on that. Um, with us personally, with our, with our business, um, with our sheet fed, we have, we have newspaper presses and we have what they call sheet fed presses. So what we were able to do is show some of our customers how they could do their products more economically by marrying both newspaper and sheet fed work together. So we'll do a real nice fancy cover for a magazine, for example, and then we'll have a little, little uh, less expensive printing process for the inside paper. You can have still nice paper and still do it on the newspaper press. So that's one of the things we've done. Thank you. I'd just uh, give the opportunity to, to any of the panel members. Um, you know, we obviously asked you all to come here to highlight your respective businesses and, and um, how successful you've been in spite of the storm. But are there any specific things um, other than not hurting you? Uh, I'm reminded of the Hippocratic Oath in medicine, do no harm, uh, which uh, uh, seems pretty simple to ask of your representatives in Congress, but perhaps there are things that we could be doing proactively that you would like to see um, uh, if you were sitting in Congress or if you were the Speaker of the House. What, what legislation or what initiatives would you like to see us advance here in the nation's capital that you think would be most beneficial to entrepreneurs and small business people in America? Any of you? Well, I'd like to address the, um, the EPA, which is something that I've come across recently. You know, the EPA is government, and uh, their Design for the Environment program is sponsored, you know, by the government. And it's amazing to me that government entities, it's like prime contracts for the government, et cetera, like the Northrop Grumman's and the Lockheed's and the Boeing's, et cetera, don't recognize the EPA's program. It, you would think that that would be the first program they would want to, to support because they get their funding, they get contracts from the government, et cetera. But what I have found out lately is that the EPA uh, has not been marketing themselves at all, and, and they've made a statement just recently about that. What would be wonderful to see, and I don't know if this has to do with legislation, giving more money to the EPA for the design for the environment program, whatever, but the green issue is supposed to be big. The federal government is pushing green. Um, everyone's trying their best to do the green thing. Um, 
And I am a green company completely with my products. Uh, but um, not only does the EPA not get any support, and that's who I've got my products certified for uh, by, but there's also no, no help, uh, no funding, nothing, uh, even though I'm spending all this money and time in producing something that I know the federal government wants to see. Um, so that might be an issue there that might have to be discussed in Congress. I don't know. But uh, these are two very important aspects that I deal with on a day-in and day-out basis right now. Well, certainly the EPA is one, in one, one uh, of the favorite agencies that gets a lot of attention from uh, business people in my district as being more, more of a hindrance than a help. But uh, my time has expired. I, I uh, thank the, uh, the panel again and, and Madam Chairman, uh, Chairwoman for uh, your indulgence. Sure. Uh, 